Hello all! Welcome back to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. In the past on this channel, we have taken a location, power, or concept from the world of Bionicle and looked into real-world science to try to determine how it could work, or, in some cases, not work. But for this investigation, we are going to do something a little different. Instead of taking known equations from the real world and applying them to the Matoran universe, we are instead going to take the perspective of a scholar within that world, following the scientific method to create some equations of our own to explain the phenomena we see. The scientific method is a process by which scientists try to understand the world. It has six basic steps. Number one, define the problem. What question are you trying to answer? Two, gather background information. What is already known about it? 3. Form a hypothesis. Construct a theory about an answer to the question based on your research. A good hypothesis should allow you to make a prediction that can be tested with experiment. 4. Test your hypothesis. Perform experiments where you gather data on your question. 5. Analyze your data. How do the experimental results compare with the predictions from your hypothesis? And 6. Draw a conclusion. Does your hypothesis match with experiment? If it does, great! Share your knowledge with the world. If it doesn't, then reject it and make a new hypothesis based on your new data and start again. Unfortunately, without access to a Kanoe Olmac to actually go to the Matoran universe itself and perform our experiments, steps 4 to 6 may be a little tricky to pull off. But steps 1 to 3, those we can do. Let's start with step 1. What phenomena from the Bionicle world are we trying to explain? Well, as you probably guessed from the title of this video, we will be looking into the strange powers of the Kanoka Discs, specifically the Enlarge and Shrink Discs. As a quick recap, Kanoka are special discs imbued with powers that have multitude of uses within the Matoran universe, from defence and combat to use as key components in vehicles and construction projects, their specific use depending on which power they hold. There are eight basic powers of Kanoka, which include both growth and shrinking, the two powers that will be the focus of our investigation today. Kanoka also come in nine separate power levels, with higher numbers denoting a stronger version of the disc's effects. Standard discs range from levels 1 to 8, while the ninth power level was only ever found within the six great discs that were the focus of the early 2004 story. Now, I should specify here, this video will not be looking into the mechanisms behind the disc's power themselves. That deserves its own separate investigation. The aim of this video is instead to take what we know about the effects of the enlarge and shrink Kanoka discs on their targets and use that knowledge to create a set of equations that allow us to make precise predictions about those effects. Or, to put it another way, if Vakama hits a Varki with a level 5 shrink disc, what would be its new size? And how would that be different if he had used a different level of disc, or targeted something else of a different starting size instead? Now that we know what question we are wanting to answer, let's move on to stage two. What do we already know? As per its entries on BSO1 Wiki, the enlarged Kanoka power temporarily causes a target to grow rapidly. The final size is tied to the power level of the disc, with a maximum of 60 feet, or about 18.29 meters, for any target. The shrink disc, meanwhile, temporarily causes a target to reduce in size rapidly. As before, the final size is tied to the power level of the disc, but this time with a minimum of 6 inches, or around 15.24 centimetres, for any target. Two things stand out to me as important to understanding the workings of the discs here. 1. No matter the starting size of the target, an enlarged disc can't make it larger than 18.29 meters tall, and a shrink disc can't make it smaller than 15.24 centimeters tall. This means that an object already at or above the height maximum, or at or under the height minimum, wouldn't be affected by the discs when struck by them. 2. The amount that the target grows or shrinks is directly related to the power level of the disc, meaning that if you used a specific power level of disc on the same target multiple times, it would always produce the same height outcome in each instance. Now that we have gathered the background information, let's form our hypothesis. We will look at the shrink discs first. 
Given what we have just discussed, we know that in between the starting size and the minimum size of 15.24 cm that is allowed by the disc's power, there are eight discrete sizes that the different levels of disc can cause. We also know that of these, the eighth power level must produce a final height that is the same as the minimum. Please note that we are ignoring the ninth power level of the great discs for now, both because the great discs were one-off special cases that were outside of the normal rules, and because of the six great discs, none of them had the shrink power. So, if we take the original height of the object, minus the minimum height from it, and then divide that resulting figure by eight, we will know the factor by which each of the eight power levels will change the target by when the disc's power takes effect. Now that we've established that, let's use what we have learned to start building our equation. For this, we will need to define some terms. To represent the original height of our target, we will use a lowercase h. To represent the minimum size that our disk will shrink the target to, let's use the term s min. In order to better visualise what's going on, we will use a TOA as an example. If we take their standard height of 2.19 metres as our h value, and remove from it the 15.24 centimetres that we have established as our universal s minimum value, that will give us 2.0376 metres. Then, dividing that by 8, we will get our reduction factor of 0.2547 metres, or 25.47 centimetres. This means that for a TOA hit by a shrink disc, they will shrink 25.47 centimetres for every power level of the disc. We can show that by taking our equation so far and multiplying it by the power level of the disc, represented by the uppercase P here. So, for a level 5 shrink disc, we can see that the resultant reduction in height would be 5 times 0.2547 metres, which equals 1.2735 metres. You will notice that some of this equation is in parentheses. That is simply there to let you know the order of operations, meaning that you need to work out the section in the parentheses first, in this case h minus s min over 8, and then multiply that result by 5. You may have also noticed that we did not show the multiplication symbol here. When writing equations like this, the multiplication symbol is usually missed out to avoid confusion due to its similarity to the symbol of x that is usually used for an unknown quantity. So if we wanted to write x multiplied by y instead of this, we would just write one of these options. Now let's add in a couple more factors to the equation so that we can use it to gain our final height value. We will represent the new height after the effects of the disk with an uppercase h. In order to get our value for this, all we need to do is take our original height, again represented by the lowercase h, and minus from it what we have built so far. Going back to our TOA example, that means that our new height after being hit by a level 5 shrink disc equals 0.9265 metres, or 91.65 centimetres. And there we have it, the full equation for the shrink discs. The equation for the enlarged disks is much the same, only the new height factor needs to be added to the original height rather than taken away, and the maximum height, or s max, needs to have the original height taken away from it as part of that new height factor rather than the other way around as in the shrink disk. What I think is really cool about this is that it lets you figure out the exact effects of these two disks for anything with a known height in all of Bionicle, which is why I'm now going to let you all try it. That's right. It's time for these investigations to get interactive. I'll set the scene. You are Toa Vakama, and the Tatarak is rampaging through Tarmetru. You decide you need to bring it down a size. As a former mask maker, your mathematician's brain crunches the numbers as you load your Kanoka launcher with a level 7 shrink disc. Taking careful aim, you fire at the 12 meter tall Rahi. What new size should you expect to see when the disc hits? Everything you need is on the screen now. Pause the video and grab a calculator. Trust me, having a go yourself and getting to the answer is so incredibly satisfying. So, what did you get? Let's work it out here and compare our answers. Remember, we need to do the operations in the parentheses first. So, if s min is 0.1524 meters and lowercase h is 12 meters, then our first operation comes out at 12 minus 0.1524, which equals 11.8476. 
Dividing that by 8 gives us 1.48095 as our reduction factor. Next, we multiply this by 7 as the power level of our disk, giving us a total reduction of 10.36665 meters. Taking that away from the Tatarak's original height of 12 meters, and we get a new height of 1.63335 meters, or 1.63 meters if we round to two decimal places. The Tatarak has been reduced down to just under the height of a tower, making it far easier for the tower metro to handle. So, did you get the right answer? Let me know in the comments. Of these two disc powers, only the enlarged disc was chosen to become one of the six great discs. The results of these equations can actually give us a reason as to why this might be in canon. Given that the great discs have a power level of 9, they can exceed the power of normal discs. My interpretation is that this means that the enlarged great disc could likely make something bigger than the usual maximum of 18.29 meters. If we also assume that it would still increase by the same linear progression of the previous eight levels of disc, this means that the height maximum the great disc could enlarge a toa to increases up to a massive 20.3 meters. However, if we apply the same logic to the theoretical shrink great disc, the equation gives us a new height that is below zero, negative 0 0.1 meters. Given that a negative height doesn't really make much sense, this gives a possible reason as to why there is no great disc of shrinking. It is not possible for a shrink disc of this level to exist. But what do you think? Did you enjoy this more maths-heavy, interactive investigation? What part of Bionicle lore do you want to see covered next? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you all again soon for another Bionicle science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.